Morning everyone, Ian from DIY Home Gardening. Um, DIY type job today, well it is a DIY type job, on vehicles. So uh, vehicle in question is a Ford B-Max, um, but this video is also applicable for the C-Max and the S-Max. How do I know that? Well, because my sister had, a S, had an S-Max and my friends have a C-Max and they all have the same fault, which is that the boot fills up with water. So let's turn the camera around and have a little look. Right, okay, so this is the B-Max. Um, we've had this car for about six years and it's always had the same issues in as much as the boot fills up with water. We've never known where the water is coming from. And well, is the tire. Let me show you the space saving tire which I've cleaned down you can see that that is absolutely soaked and it gets all slimy and that I mean look at the state of that absolutely soaked and what also happens if you're parked on the wrong on the hill the wrong way round is that you get water down into the footwell, which travels down from there, well, to there, all the way from here. So uh, I've taken the decision to literally strip it apart um, and just try and get to the root of the problem. I've already sponged out a load of water. Uh, that's the second lot, but you can see that it's still wet inside and you can see where the water was up to. So there was a good inch of water sitting in there. And what also happens because you get this build up of water in there and say so it then travels through, you get high humidity uh, within the car, which then plays havoc with the, the light section. And it also affects the fuse box or the fuse cabling which is under or runs underneath the seat uh, which then affects the rear sensors and the radio so um, yeah. let me show you what the issue is so the problem is when the boot is shut down as so the water runs down this inside channel you would normally have the light housing here. The water travels down here and goes into there, which is a very thin ducting, which invariably blocks up. And so that can cause the water to overspill. But this ducting, which is meant to travel to the outside of the vehicle, only to the outside of the vehicle, um, it passes by a well, a section there, which should be sealed over, as you can see. Um, it wasn't sealed over particularly well, that's peeled away. And that uh, it's accessible from outside between this bodywork and the archway for the, the wheel. So if that's not correct, the water fills into there and then overspills. And likewise, you've got this grommet here that should be a nice tight uh, stuck down fit that leads to the outside world. And there's also this grommet here that also feeds to the uh, pan below. So I've re siliconed that one down. I'm going to silicon this one down because I know that's not the issue. And we'll concentrate on that section there. So what I'll do is I'm just going to turn the hose pipe on and I will show you what the problem is. Right, so we've got the water going, just to show you with the hose pipe. Now, lifting up here, you can see the water is going down the outside. So we can see that. But can you also see there's a build up of water there? And that is because the water's not traveling completely down the channel it's actually impacting on a section of um, sealant on the outside or tape. There's literally just tape. 
and I'll show you where that is. So let me just turn this water off. It doesn't take a lot of water to make that happen and uh, it takes a lot less if the, uh, the channel is blocked up with uh, debris. So let me just turn the water off and then we'll have a little look together. Right, so I've moved the vehicle up just so it's in a bit more of a dry position for safety reasons. As I parked on the slope, put the tyre behind that. Parking brake on and the gear in first, just so the car's not going to roll back. Now you can see there's water still trickling out from the lower chamber. And you can probably still see a residue of water in there. I'll show you how we get to that section. So what you need to do is get under the vehicle. And it's quite easy to feel where it is. Right, so we're under the vehicle. That hole there is the one that leads to the boot. As you can see, there's the, uh, the mounting brackets for the inside. And through there, you can just make out the black tape or the black mastic that leads to the outside world. And I don't think you'll be able to pick this up because of the light, but essentially you need to stick your hand up there to the side and you'll feel that there's just a small portion of tape. And yeah, in this case, it isn't stuck down well it's coming away from the bodywork so yeah you know, let me yeah and that's that's all it is so it's literally oh, just this flimsy bit of tape stopping the water coming from the outside uh coming from yeah the outside drainage channel into the housing of the car and now that's off you can pretty much see all the way to the outside world it goes right the way through and what there is also in there there's some foam which is presumably intended as um, acoustic soundproofing but all that does is uh, when it's leaking serve to soak up even more water so the Obviously, we've taken out that, uh, or pulled out the internal lining, and able to access it properly. You've got to take this internal boot protector out. It's only held in by two star um, star bit screws. And I'll show you um, how it all goes back together, and then you'll be able to do the reverse of that. So we've got that out. We can now see what's going on here. And first things first is our silicon. Well, you want to dry that all down, and then we'll start by siliconing that cap in and also get rid of this water that has built up once again. So, like with all siliconing, the key is to make sure it's dry before you actually put it in. So, give that a light um, clean up and dry down, and same with your bodywork there, make sure that's nice and dry, and then what you're going to do is apply silicon around the outside of this um, bung if you like and that's what it looks like on the outside when it's stuck down so apply the silicon around there or to the body housing whichever is easiest for you and then we'll push it back into place so that's the silicon on the bodywork and then you just literally I mean I'm gonna to have to use two hands push it down get a nice firm fit and what you'll find will be that that uh, piece there will go to the underside of the bodywork and this fatter section will sit above the bodywork so let me get that in now there we are so that's that's in there and then just use a piece of kitchen roll to wipe off the excess silicon like you would do with well any other siliconing jobs so I'll just uh, give that a nice okay. tie so then the next stage is to patch over that section if you've managed to save the tape then that's great which is 
what I've done here. So that's separated quite nicely. Otherwise, essentially, it is the same as punch repair tape that you get for a bike, um, you know, an inner tube. So if you've got some of that to hand or you've got a, a local bike repair place to you, then you can use that. Um, or you can always use, which I never remember what it's called, um, the old, um, uh, what's, you know, that tape. Can't think what it's called. Um, but gaffer tape, so you can use the gaffer tape to stick over and then you'll be siliconing or using a bitumen paint, if you've got bitumen paint, to go over the top of that. Really, that's just going to be your basic outer layer. But as I say, ideal world, you want to get some of this uh, bitumen type tape, which uh, so you use for punch repairs on your bike. You will, because you can't really get this whole side panelling out without taking out the seats. For doing that bit, you'll just need a second pair of hands just to hold it out of the way. So uh, that's what I'm going to get. So I'd start with, put uh, a bed of silicon all around, and then you'll then be able to stick the tape or sit the tape stick the tape whatever back over the hole like so with your first piece in place we'll just put a bead of silicon up there to make sure that you're going to form a nice watertight joint right so that's the second piece of tape over we just want to slide it so you're covering the whole of the hole. Can't say that too many times. Make sure you push it down. So we're pushing both these sections down. So nicely going to bond to that uh, frame. And then just over the top with a whole layer of silicon or say bitumen paint if you have that. Both will do exactly the same job, but I mean, let's face it, you couldn't be doing a worse job than these uh, supposed you know, professional Ford car builders, because it's literally just caked in it. But anyway, let's get that done. Right, so we've done the silicon over the whole lot, and then just as an extra precaution, I'm gonna put some of the gaffer tape straight over the top, which is nice uh, high tensile stuff, and that will, allow for one a very good sealed joint but also it will mean that you're able to reassemble this internal covering straight away um, and allow the uh, silicon to dry over the next 48 hours while still being able to use the vehicle right so that's uh, that is all finished that's watertight or that will be watertight within about 48 hours once silicon has gone off so um yeah, as long as you're using a good silicon that is suitable for exterior use, um, then uh, yeah, you'll before be fine. you get this in, you need to put this um, locker foam back in. Well, you don't need to, but you might as well. So this has got to be squeezed either into here, or you can put it more comfortably down this way. Just make sure the cabling is out of the way so that wants to come down to this slightly chunkier part of the housing and sit about there so that is that bit done next you just want to make sure that this is still free so that is the electrical wiring loom that leads to your outdoor or your uh, lights so that moves nicely so that's good and then obviously as uh, as this is obviously to keep it all nice and dry we'll just give it a final check to make sure there's no moisture under here which a bit of grime but otherwise not too bad so what you got to do is pull this bit out and fold this in at the same time 
like so. And that kind of lifts and pushes at the same time to get it over this bracket there. Once it's beyond the bracket, there's just a little piece of fabric. Let me show you. So this little piece here, that literally just anchors in there and that stops that moving. This is slightly more difficult. And that just goes behind your rubber on the on the boot and that is back into place what you now need to do is pull this flap open and this is the compartment that leads through to where the light housing goes so let me just get the light housing so this is the light housing it comes in two sections this bit is what we want first because you need to put this wiring loom into that bracket whilst you've got the housing out just give it a little tidy get rid of any of this debris so use an old screwdriver or something like that just to clean out this muck and all of that muck is what's fallen whilst the uh, boot has been shut if when you've um, taken this apart you find that this foam has uh, degraded then that would definitely be worth replacing as that's what's going to keep it uh, watertight so we we'll just pop this into there nice uh, nice and tight and it makes a click when it is in position you then have this panel here which essentially just let me show you again pushes in underneath there there's nothing to click in place it just kind of holds as it is on this light housing there's one of these nickel type things which will go into there and there is a little bracket at the bottom which also goes in so start by lining that up and literally just push it into place it's as simple as that it will still feel a little bit loose what you need is that bolt there which fastens through from the inside so can either use someone else to hold it or just use your stomach and inside there you'll find there's the hole that accommodates this so i don't know whether you'll be able to see um, but that is the fixing just in there and you literally just keep winding in clockwise until this becomes nice and tight so let me just get that done so whilst you do it just use your hand just to feel if it's loose and you keep turning the bit inside clockwise and it is spring loaded and once that is solid it's got no movement in it at all you know that that's a nice tight feel this bit here you will always have that movement because as I say it's not really held in by much and you still end up with this gap here and it's down this gap which is where you end up with that excess water traveling so now we've got uh, got that housing in bend that carpet in and that is your inside all finished up now we'll completely uh, dry this out okay so with that out just give the, uh, the inside a bit of a clean down as you might as well you get rid of all the uh, all the rubbish all the sand and stuff like that it's been left for your children um invariably going to the beach and stuff like that so uh, let's get a shot of all of this and then we're uh, ready to put the housing back around and these are the two screws and they have a star bit to them or a star head. so you just need an appropriate sized bit that will fit in there uh, and uh, it's a t20 t20 bit so 
there's only one way that it can fit so don't worry about getting it mixed up let's pop those there for a moment and you want to make sure that both of these sides are in as tight as they can do and again this is slightly fiddly in as much as you've got to get it in the groove and then sitting down so the kind of easiest way is to run your fingers along to let it sit that way same on the other side and give it a little push in so if you have a look there you can see that that's aligned up with that hole and that will be aligned up with that hole and that's nice and snug it's not sitting up and it's holding both sides into position so we'll just pop those into there just do them loosely so you don't lose the screws and then once you've got those in you just go and tighten it right down do it so it's pinching on that side we get it so it's pinching on this side and then that way you can just check that it's aligned up properly Which, yeah just make sure it's nice and central and then tighten it down properly and that is all finished up that's all the inside done on this side if you wanted to you can check that but um, I know that side's good because the water never comes in from there it's always coming from this side so with that that is done we'll get the tire cleaned up and all the housing stuff can go inside and then we'll tackle the outside in exactly the same way that tucks into there like so your towing pin, your bar, and that is all back together. Got it nice and tidy, and that literally just sits onto there, like so. Car tire, just need to give that a bit of a wipe down, and then that can go back in as well. Spray. Yeah, so that's what I've been using. So you're just putting a little fit spray on that to counter any of the rust that might have happened. And that literally goes down and then holds the wheel into position. And you just turn it until it's tight. Right, so that's the last couple of turns, like so. That's gone, not going to move anywhere. And then you can Put your carpet back in and that is finished so that is the inside back together the actual carpet that clips onto there and dresses down uh, that's actually in the garage still just drying out because it was saturated so uh, that probably take a couple of days for that to dry fully because uh, in their wisdom fords use a nice sponge backing to it so the sponge soaks up loads and loads of water if you have this issue but essentially that is the backside done. Now to tackle the underside. Okay, we're under the car now. So I'm going to try and show you where the issue is. So whereas before I was saying it's a grommet, it's not, see this flap here, which is actually a vent that goes to the inside of the vehicle. Very clever idea putting a vent where the water trickles down. So we just need to secure that flat down so that it covers over this uh, vented section again. And that will then stop the excess water pouring down. You can see how wet all that panelling is there, um, which doesn't really do anything other than uh, affect your, your noise. So for that, yeah, we'll get some silicon onto that first which um, I'm switching to this definite uh, exterior grade 
silicon. There we are. So, and it is uh, waterproof. So, unfortunately, there's not an easy way to do it. You're literally going to have to squeeze the silicon onto your finger and then apply that, and then silicon um, the flap down over the vent. Right. So, that inside flap that's been just uh, fixed into position, and then but the actual problem area is just where my finger is and if you stick it there so it's just on this bottom section there is a hole so that is where the original piece of um, butane uh, tape was so that just needs fixing back over and that will solve the problem and if you're not sure then it's always worth just checking the other side as well and then you'll be able to find exactly where the position is on that side as to how it's covered on your problem area and uh, then you can tackle both at once so that's uh, that's what I've got to finish up just get the tape on silicon it in place okay so uh, you can probably make out the gray silicon there and that has been taped so it's had the butane tape underneath it siliconed in place with the uh, other tape put over the top siliconed in place so again that gives our triple layer um, or double layer plus silicon silicon so that is all done and hopefully with um, sort of 24 to 48 hours worth of curing time that will keep it nice and watertight and that is it I say that is it. I mean, it's a bit of a pain, a right pain in the, uh, you know, whatever to get get this done. Um, if the car was jacked up, I dare say it'd be uh, a lot easier. And uh, But you definitely need help. And so I've had my little helper this morning. And um, yeah, you do need a second person for uh, odd bits and pieces, whether that's uh, fetching, carrying or shining a torch or whatever but uh, essentially that is the job done and hopefully no more leak in that boot so um, as with everything if you've got any questions and please send them over to me I'll do my very best to answer them for you if you like what I'm doing whether that's on the DIY type of videos or the gardening then uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out on the future videos that I'm doing and uh, more importantly, just enjoy, well, I'd say enjoy what you're doing. But um, yeah, give it a go. See how you get on. And uh, you might have fun doing it. But maybe not. But uh, it's worth a go because otherwise these jobs are um, quite expensive jobs once you send the car to the garage to be looked at. So, and there you go. See you soon. Bye for now.